cranky kind of. Was you talking to me? Yeah, I'm just talking to Mac about you while he starts with it. So. <laughs> I <can't laughs> hear. Again, I'm in another place. Hey, everyone. Thank you for joining us for episode 16 of SEO Fight Club. Uh, we're having uh, Clint pilot today. So ah. the Clint do the boilerplate. You're all screwed. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome to FCO 16. As, he, as Ted said, we are doing a presentation on Anchor Text. Um, as always, if you want to learn more about who we are, just go to seofightclub.org or you can check out SEO 2 Lab or Page Optimizer Pro. The Cora and Pop chat Skype chat are full, so there's a waiting list. You can sign up at both of those websites. Uh, Ted's is on the top and Kyle's is at the bottom because they're, I guess they're having a CTA competition or whatever. So if you liked Kyle Moore, go fill out Kyle's. You have to search for it at the bottom of his website. I think he's using them little ticks too, hidden in the footer. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a popularity contest. <laughs> okay. And let's see. SEO this week, as you guys may or may not know. I do another weekly show on Tuesdays at the same time, and it's called SEO This Week, where I go over all the articles that I've found uh, from the past week in the SEO market and just kind of filter out the garbage for you. Uh, talked about eight different articles, well, five different articles, and then we did a site audit. I think the site audit should be of value to everyone. Uh, in particular, Ted's views on picking the right keywords and having to teach a, uh, a market the, to look for your product, uh, especially when you're trying something new. You got anything to add on that one, Ted? Yeah, that was a, a great episode. I really like looking at a small business. I often feel that Big businesses have it easy with SEO. They have so many resources and there's so much tolerance for like risk and mistakes. Whereas small business live and die based on their oh, SEO resources. and their other marketing. So it just, you know, the stakes are higher in my opinion with the small business. Uh, but that, that discussion was just really cool. Yeah, I have, I have fun doing those. I like doing the side audit and helping people. Um, you know, I get we get paid. All of us get paid plenty of money, and being able to give back to some people is kind of cool. Especially if you know it's a small business who's struggling and may not be able to afford it and afford an effective SEO. So, um, I, yeah, I enjoyed it. Plus, we're getting the free personalized wine box out of it. <laughs> yeah, we'll show it. That's awesome. All right, so this week's talk topic bomb we are going to go over anchor text full disclosure i did i gave part of this uh presentation at seo spring training so if you're there it might be a re uh, a revisiting of it for you uh, but i want to get into it a little bit more i want to do a fight club since you people are really interested in link building and you really can't have a link building con conversation without talking about the anchor text if you don't know what anchor text is, that's really how you do it. It's all right there. Oh, Jesus. What'd you do, Ted? You broke it. So you're just uh, associating your website with a set of words. You can use whatever you want, black rules or whatever. And typically, after Penguin, these percentages are what the gurus were telling you to do. Branded anchor text, naked links, 20%, and keeping your exact match anchors less than 1%. This was kind of the general guideline that everyone talked about, and everyone was following, quote, unquote, everyone was following, or said they were following when they were teaching courses or writing blog posts, et cetera. Yeah, Excuse I don't me. Really want to chime in on that. Like, I, <laughs> I violated those rules everywhere. I <laughs> Clint, real quick, before we move on, yep. in the line there, the, the AHREF, equals which part of that is the anchor text the right here oh, i can't highlight it i think i can nope let me highlight it the black rules where it says black yeah the two words black rules black. uh so not anything else is anything else displayed like on the website no well it shouldn't be unless you mess the code up but it, nothing else should be displayed you can be able to put this anywhere you want to um you can actually alter this code a little bit and make it so it doesn't even technically display it all it'll blend right in so and then what we're talking about here is this text that appears on a web page that is clickable would that be a fair definition correct 
Uh, and you can use anchor tech supplies for internal and external links. So uh, if you have a menu uh, and the home page is on there everywhere and it says home and it's clickable, your anchor, your anchor text is home for your home page across your website. Is that it? Good. Okay. All right. So hopefully we can clear that up. So anyway, everyone is spewing this stuff out. But I started asking a question, and I'm not the only one. A friend of mine, I like to call him a friend because I actually hang out. We drank a lot of beer, and he cost me some money in Las Vegas. This is Michael Miles. He also thought about this, and we wondered if it was true. So we start looking back at it and just look, re reviewing some examples here uh, where exact match is actually, you know, this is 33%. This page here in particular was ranking uh, first or second uh, for Web Design Phoenix. So under the theory that the gurus are spouting out and teaching in this, uh, this shouldn't happen. Uh, Google Penguin should pick that up, filter this website out, uh, and clearly it doesn't. Another example is Red Spot Design. As you hear, the brand is 14%, URLs are 8%, but then we get into the money keywords, 7, 4, 5, 7, uh, and this is another web designer thing, too. You can see really great examples of across the web design market. And the reason you can see that is because most web designers, where do they put their links? It's in the footer. Uh, and Ted's talked to us before about site-wide footer links working. So it's kind of a twofer. One, your anchor text ratio is probably not what it should be. Uh, and two, site-wide footer links work. Uh, so it's something to test on, on both fronts. And here's another one, uh, best drones. They're not even using anchor text. They have no anchor text, or they have a period uh, in most of their links, which I thought was pretty interesting and fun coming from a black hat perspective. I wouldn't recommend you guys doing this because if you have someone in your market that's playing NARC SEO, uh, this is really easy to report to Google and you can get triggered for it. But um, there you go, it still works. And uh, those people that say that Google is filtering out those kind of links, uh, it's clearly not, because this page is ranking number three for best drones. So, Anchor Text is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. This is a funny one that I found. <laughs> Just because it was humorous, I threw it in here. It's Republican People Meet. It's a dating site for Republicans. Look where all the links are coming from. Coming from Russia. <laughs> Which I thought was humorous at the time. This is before the Mueller report and all that stuff. So, uh, there you go. So Michael Milas went in and he went crazy deep. If you, I don't know if you ever bought links from him uh, before he joined the dark side and went over to uh, local client takeover, uh, and he's working with them now. But he, before that, he created this roll-up of anchor text classification uh, in order to help identify gaps from your competition. Uh, and if you can, go ahead and take a screenshot of this now. Uh, I think it'll be a very good guide for you when you're doing the rest of the stuff we're talking about, um, i.e. classification. So some of the fragment things that I like to use, uh, exact match, clearly, um, it, his thing is only says only one. I, I, I kind of disagree with that because we've already seen that. Uh, exact match fragments, uh, exact match variations. We're going to talk about variations with Cora. Uh, you can play with those and add your exact match into those. Uh, same with the exact match variation strings. These are, if you look at these variations and variation strings uh, and match fragments and branded match fragments, you notice that Cora is giving you all this stuff. Uh, so when you get Cora 5 or you're using your Cora or pop reports right now, those are your anchor texts. Uh, and a lot of people aren't even using those like that. Uh, they're putting them in the content and kind of forgetting about them. But those are also your anchor texts that you can use. So you can stop getting rid You can get rid of uh, anchor texts like visit us, click here, learn more and more info. It's really a wasted anchor text in my opinion. Uh, and you can use those variations uh, and matches from either one of those tools or from your own eyes in Google and create a much better and more powerful anchor text profile uh, in my opinion. You guys have any comments on this? 
No, this is this is always really cool to see these types of uh, anchor matches, and you know, I would probably extend these. Like I saw this list when you showed it to me last year. I would probably extend these with uh, sentiment uh, matches and commercial intent matches, and and all of those pools of things too. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a really good point, uh, and this could be really depending on your market. You can probably get really into the weeds on this but i wonder at what point would that be overkill which is why i haven't added too much to um, based off from, from what my list did and from uh the initial views of the core of five content report you'll probably extend this with uh path matches because people are are doing vector paths instead of images um and you had one in here for the the images, right? The do you have an image type? Uh, no type. You used to, yeah. Because um, yeah, there's a lot of people doing image links, and then you might even classify like the branded image versus like some other type of image link. Um, so yeah, you know, my guess is this year this list is probably going to grow out quite a bit. Yeah, I, I expect it to. I, on a note there, that note text where it says image link, if it is an image link, those are something you really got to keep an eye on uh, because there is a negative SEO attack that's going out, pulling images off your websites and linking back to your, linking back to you, uh, and that is actually working really well as a negative SEO attack. So. Uh, keep in mind that that is one you want to examine very closely and stay on top of. Yeah, and, and no text uh, image link. Uh, there's also like no text that are pixels that are no text that are actually no text, like yeah. the anchor is blank. So yeah, there's, there's probably room for uh, this list to grow with a lot of classifications. Yeah, I think so. The only thing I would add to this on what I like is I get into the um, the strings a lot. I, I'm not convinced that Google really does a great job understanding relevancy of a link with the words around it, but I feel pretty good about relevancy of the link with the words that are in the text, Correct. Uh, within the anchor text. And so I really like when I when I do a lot of, especially internal linking, because you can just use the page title, you know, the, you know, going from this title to that title, you end up with a nice string. I think it's a good way to, to make the, the anchor text a little more relevant. Help Google understand what it's about. Right, I do. I do the same thing as as, as you on internal linking. Primarily, it's always exact match for me. Uh, but exact match variation strings are, are really good, like you said, and and you can do that with the titles, especially if you're optimizing those in the right way. Um, yeah. One one thing that uh, isn't on this list that you will see in the content report is a high percentage of HTML anchor text. And I don't know why people are doing this, but I'm seeing it quite commonly that people are turning their headings into links. So you will see the actual HTML of the heading as the anchor text, or you'll see a whole block, a whole div of content uh, being the, the anchor text. Uh, and you'll see that often like on uh, e-commerce websites where for some reason they're making the whole product token on the category page, a link, a nested link. So all that HTML of each product is anchor text. And so you'll have this HTML anchor text type that's very, very common, but it isn't addressed in this list. Huh. You're talking about that big old gobbledygook mess that we saw in the cop Spora group, right? Because when you say using to me, when you're saying using the entire header as the anchor text, um, that sounds to me like it's coming from a table of contents type of plugin. Well, just just imagine if you will, like I think the better example is the e-commerce example where you're on a category page and each product has this little div token with an image, a product name and the pricing and the stars. And so all of that HTML uh, some websites are actually wrapping that HTML with the link. So oh. all of that HTML is the anchor text. Oh, okay. So there's these HTML anchors. That's another classification, but they're extremely common in some niches. 
I wonder how if that's an on purpose thing or just the the CMS being used to generate the store. Yeah, I mean, it looks like it was developed that way, and it might be a CMS thing, it might be a plugin thing, but it is quite common. And if it's common, then if you clean it up and see an improvement, then you're already ahead of the niche. That'd be pretty cool. That's interesting. Definitely something more to dig into. Uh, let's see. So what Miles did and what uh, we've expanded on this and built this out a little bit better is you, as we put the classifications in here. So typically we go to five. Uh, in a harder niche, we'll go to 10 and classify all our competitors' uh, backlinks using this system here and figuring out the averages. So obviously the average is the actual average and adjusted average are just kind of round up for, to be on the safe side. Uh, and then you compare those with yours right here and find out where you need to grow. Uh, the, the way the spreadsheet works, you know, we tested it out. We had like four different versions of it built. We used even using my uh, right now. There's no way to do this like auto magically. Uh, so this is a lot of work. So if you want to, I would just kind of rebuild, look at this and rebuild that based off of the uh, five URL example, which typically what we found is actually it's more than enough because we want to get in the top three. So if we have a better link profile than the, the top in one of those top three, uh, then we're doing pretty good with ourselves. Uh, and basically what happens is after all these percentages are kicked in and after we know ours, we compare that with ours uh, and then we start building anchor text based off of that. It's what Google is already showing uh, that is relevant for that market and what it's looking for. So if we can match that uh, with high power domains, high power PBNs or outreach, et cetera, uh, then you can do a really good job. And the reason we have like, bought onto this so quickly is because Cora and Pop, uh, more Cora at the time, was showing us that Every keyword in every market was requiring different things. So why wouldn't it be the same for anchor text? Why would that magic number set that uh, the Googlers are telling us that we need to do, why should that apply everywhere across the board? Uh, and I don't think that it does, just like Cora has proven that different on-page requirements for different keywords, I think the anchor text is kind of the same. You guys have any thoughts on that? No, I love this. I, I think this is the exact right approach. When everybody, anybody ever says, you know, what should my exact match be? What should my brand be? Go and look at it. Look at what your competitors are doing, then you can get a pretty good idea yeah. of what you should do. More to the focus is what should I focus on that's the most important. Uh, and more often than not, I think you'll see that exact match is pretty pretty powerful in, in most keyword markets. Um, Ted, I don't know if the e-commerce you've seen different, but uh, exact match, uh, exact match through title uh, is also really good and really powerful and pushing up the needle. Yeah, yeah, I I mostly dabbled in exact match uh, footer links when I was doing SEO for e-commerce. Um, so I we would have like a, uh, a promotion. We'd have a new item. We got 5,000 units in sale. We're promoting it for these three weeks. So that's when I would typically kick in that exact match footer link site wide to help that promotion, you know, turn those units as quickly as possible. Yeah. Um, the, the branded stuff, I, I didn't worry about too much because, you know, usually the home page had that in spades, so I didn't need to deal with it on every page. And plus, whenever we do social campaigns, we'd see, you know, branded searches spike. Um, so, yeah, the exact match was the, the main playground we would target. For sure. Cool. Uh, just so the follow on, if you're in the Skype group, once we get a better uh, working spreadsheet that everyone can use without having to do an hour of video instruction, uh, we'll hand that out. So in the meantime, take a screenshot of this and have your guys or you rebuild it uh, in a way that works for you. 
All right, so that's the end of the uh, the anchor text thing. It's really, you know, it's a complicated. It's not a complicated idea. It just it takes a long time to do. So I wanted to add a little bit extra, uh, and this is something to test on your websites. And it's something that we've been doing to secure all kinds of traffic from Bing, and it's using Dublin Core. And it's stupid easy to implement. So if you're not doing it, uh, go ahead and fire that off, uh, and and see if you can. Just grab a little bit extra uh, search traffic uh, from a search engine whose typical buyer spends about $500 more than what a Google buyer would. Uh, so it's definitely worth going out. And if you don't know, Dublin Core, it's a metadata initiative. Facebook's OG data is based off of Dublin Core. Uh, and it's really a more authoritative way to make to identify that your site is legit and because google is using what it's using the theory behind this is that google or that bing has said hey dublin core the more um legit authoritative sites are using dublin core uh, and it's becoming in my opinion they're using it as a ranking factor we don't have bora because ted's you know focused on cora and not a lot of people are being centric uh, to prove that theory, but the rankings are telling me that's kind of what Google or that Bing is using. So to implement, if you have uh, WordPress, all you do is put this double core, Dublin Core metadata generator plugin, or if you're using a tool like SEO Press Pro, uh, and there's a couple other ones that put it in there, and just put in this data right here. Take a screenshot if you don't have WordPress, you kind of have to duplicate that. Uh, but once it's on there, it's really easy to do. Uh, and I saw ranking spikes probably within a week, and my indexing doesn't drop off anymore. Uh, typically, especially on Digitalier and this SEO website, uh, we're you know we get a page indexed on Bing, and then it'll all fall off. And, that, and I think everyone is kind of you know can understand that pain. Uh, when we put Dublin Core on there, our indexing actually stuck now. So I would actually recommend you guys trying that out. And there's something for you to test. So if you're looking for something to test, uh, this is a good place to start because it's really easy to do. Yeah. I, I noticed that you don't have um, description on here, so you're really not using this to get keywords into this type of um, uh, schema. You're using just kind of more, it's more like a trust signal almost, like we're legit. Exactly. It's, I, I think Bing is using it as a trust signal. If you have it, you're authoritative, you're good to go. And then they're reading your red, your website to get the, you know, what are you about kind of thing. And are you doing this uh, just on the home page or on every page? Right. Why? Yeah. And this plugin is actually, it's it literally is stupid easy. You install it, you activate it, and you click two buttons to turn on some extra cool features that it's got, and then you're, and you're done. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. The things I like about this are that um, it's something that Google can't patent. So that's probably, you know, part of the reason why Bing is doing it. Bing can't do everything that Google does because of those patents. Um, I also like it because it's really old school and academic. When you research what Dublin Core is, I mean, it, it goes back. And so the fact that, that Bing is doing it, I don't know if they're actively doing it because it's it's cool and academic or if they did it way back when and they just never cut it out <laughs> uh so it, it, it could be either way we just don't know um you know bing is a fantastic resource here in north america so if you're in canada mexico united states uh, the browser share for a large online retailer is, you know, probably in the ballpark of 20 to 35 percent. And so that's what I used to see in online retail for uh, organic revenue from Bing. And that was significant. Um, so getting better indexing and in Bing across all of your stores in this part of the world is great. What what I would hear internationally is that Bing has no volume internationally, and I can understand that. So it could be less of a concern if you're in Germany, uh, for example. Um, so 
with that, there's uh, one other thing you have to consider about Bing, and that is if you're not set up with Bing Webmaster Tools, you need to be, because if you don't go in and max out the crawl rate in Bing Webmaster Tools, Bing will literally explore your website one page per week. So you have to go in, you have to set it up, and you have to boost it if you want any crawl rate out of Bing. Um, and then after you're crawled, you need to go back and, and dial it back because Bing is really a misfit moron bot and it will waste your server resources to no end. So you, you got to kind of watch it on, on both sides of that. Uh, but yeah, this is, this is awesome. This is a golden nugget in my book. Yeah, I, I love doing it. I think it's an easy win to boost some traffic. And honestly, it, sometimes it converts better than Google traffic. So uh, especially if you're in the electronics market or the fashion uh, space, you guys should be implementing this like right away. Yeah, yeah. And in, in e-com, our biggest complaint about Bing was that uh, they always converted at a larger average cart, we suspect, because a higher percentage of their users are actually humans versus bots. Uh, and our main complaint was they we couldn't we couldn't buy enough clicks from Bing. Yeah, Microsoft does a crap job promoting this search engine, I think. But um, if you look at it, the quality of the search results is almost on par with Google. So um, I think they just need a better better focus on promoting it. If if you know if they got it, if they separated it from the rest of their stuff and and gave it to its own team. Uh, you probably get a lot more out of this, and you'd see more people using it, in my opinion. All right, and I think that's it. That's all I got. Yep, that's it. All right, let's look, look through some of the questions. If you have questions about this or other top uh, topics, now's the time to enter them. Please uh, put in some asterisks at the beginning so we know their questions. Um, let me make sure I have my chat on live chat because we have had people getting filtered in the past. All right, uh, Pastor Duke. Hey, guys, I have always wondered about article title links. Uh, can you have too many both internally and externally? Uh, for instance, social media shares or related content widgets. Uh, I speak for myself. I was ranking websites just off of title links from social media shares back in the day when uh, Triber was a thing. Um, yeah, I was I was doing websites left and right, rank, ranking those pages just using social media shares. So it still works. It's still a natural profile um, because when you have those social plugins turned on and, and set to do title, it's kind of a natural thing to happen. So uh, yeah, I, I still use them. I don't use them as much as I used to, but I still use them. What do you actually make of the period anchors? Uh, I'm not sending any intentionally, but I have noticed them pouring in lately along with image hot links. That's from Dan Hale. The image hot links is a negative SEO thing. Uh, if you just got or a email saying, uh, hey, we can do link cleanups from you. Uh, it's those guys that are doing it. So it's the new, the new latest and greatest scam. Uh, so you have to stay on top of those pretty well. Uh, the periods could be the same thing, but you can also manipulate your page uh, authority and rank with just the periods. Uh, but you can't go full on retard like that example that I showed you. You want if you those are going to stand out and people are gonna, can report to you. So. Uh, but it could also be that negative thing to you. But if you got the image hot links, I'd get on those right now. I just cleaned up a website. We did a link cleanup for them when we first took them on. Two months later, I'm cleaning up another 5,000 domains. So um, you gotta you gotta have to stay on top of those image things. Um, what's the uh, URL for the Dublin Core plugin? Do you know that offhand? Uh, Simon shared that in the in the chat. I'm pretty sure that's the right one. But if you just okay. search for that exact name, it's going to pop up. All right. Um, Dan Hale uh, says, uh, Clint, uh, you said that you were going to discuss your approach to tier two anchor text. 
I assume this uh, was the week. How do you attack it? So if you follow the theories that Penguin goes down as far as tier three, uh, then you should be careful. Um, but since I've never really bought onto that, I always do exact match or exact match variations uh, to my tier one sites. Uh, my tier one sites are legit real sites, right? So um, you want to, if you want to protect those, especially if you're doing an outreach or something like that, you don't want to send a bunch of garbage to those people that are you know nice enough to host your content and give you a link. Uh, so I use exact match, but I would treat those just like you would treat your money sites. You don't really have to go after the anchor text variations, though, like I, we talked about here. You don't have to go back and, and review all that stuff. Um, you already have it, so keep those same percentages up on your Tier 1s for your Tier 2s, uh, and you'll be pretty safe. Tier 3, just you know, do kitchen sink, do exact match out of the way, and go for it um, because those Tier 2s are your links, and you can kill them anyway, so. So a uh, question came in, where can I get these presentations? So what do you think, guys? Should we uh, put links to the presentations on the uh, website? I can go back and do that. It's just a matter of should we? <laughs> I don't even know if we have all of them. <laughs> uh, I, I have most of them. There's uh, one or two that are, are Google Docs. We'd have to download, find them, and download them. But, uh, is, is there a reason to not to versus a reason to? Yeah, I, 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 I'm okay with it. I just got to go back and do it if you guys are okay with it. Yeah, we're not sharing anything that we don't want out there. It'd be kind of silly for us. <laughs> All right, so uh, once I get it done, you can find them on the website that we keep mentioning at the beginning. If um, you want to, you put a link into all the presentations and, and share it on Google Drive, and then now you're building links to SEO Fight Club. <laughs> Yeah, there, there we go. We'll we'll figure out a, a SEO link scheme we can get penalized for. <laughs> there will be a canary in the coal mine test. You'll know there's a penalty once we go down for it. Um, so your exact match is to tier one articles topic or what you want on the money site? Uh, the money site. So if you're building your links... Let's just say that you're building your links. You want the the keyword that you're targeting in the title, meta description, and URL, and preferably the content of your tier one links. Uh, so you're going to send that exact match to the article that you're supporting article. Hopefully that makes sense. So probably easier to see in a diagram, but. Um, if you're a follower of OMG, you know the reverse sink or swim or the sink or swim policy or the way that Greg Morrison teaches. That shit works. Uh, that works like gangbusters. So um, title tag, URL, meta description. If it's in there, the link is more relevant and will pass more power. Uh, so that's how I build all my tier ones. And then when I'm building links with tier two, that exact match or that title is in there. So now I'm good. All right, uh, this one is worded awkwardly, but I'll give it a go. Uh, is it a ranking factor if the own name of the page and content article Digital Ear recommends? Is it a ranking factor? Yeah, I was trying to figure that one out too. I'm not sure. Question. Can you rephrase that question and then we'll take a stab at it? That sounds like it. Should you add the brand? And that's how I'm interpreting that is probably like, you know, keyword, blah, 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 hyphen brand name. Should you put your brand name in there? Uh, and typically what I recommend is if it's a brand new website, put your brand in there so you can build up the brand searches. And then as you go later down, you can cut that out and save that space in the search results to for CTR stuff like this top, blah, blah, blah. That's how I do it. I don't know, Kyle, if you do something different. No, no. All right. Uh, any guides to build syndication networks or driver stacks? Uh, there's tons of guides out there, but honestly, if you want to know how to do it right in a way that ranks, I would get uh, RYS Reloaded from the Semantic Mastery guys. Those are the only people that I've seen that actually 
teach how to do it right. All right. Opinions on map stacking? It works. If you're not using it, you're done. <laughs> when you're doing your map stacking, are you embedding that map on like a tier one? Uh, you can. Or otherwise, I just use, I make my tier one a map link and you just kind of go to town with it. Uh, there's a few softwares out there that you can kind of leverage that or, uh, you know, I've, I built one as an example. I built a map and I linked to it with two other maps and then I linked to those uh, two maps with a, um, a S3 from Amazon and I linked to that Amazon S3 from, from a Google Cloud page. So those are two HTMLs. Uh, link it to the maps, and then I ranked for locksmith in Toronto. Like literally, the the word locksmith. We're from we went from fourteen to four with just that power of the map stack. So, like I said, if you're not using those, you're you're giving up on them. Google's giving you. They might as well just say here, build links here, sign on those things. They want you to do it, so use them. So can uh, someone in chat link to the uh, Semantic Mastery uh, uh, stacking course? Uh, I don't, that's up to you. Just, um, yeah, as long as it's not an affiliate link, I don't have a problem with it. Right. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with it. I just don't have the link. So if someone in the audience has the link, otherwise uh, uh, ping us later on yeah. Skype. Or just look up Semantic Mastery or RYS Reload. It should be pretty easy to find. Yeah. Um, let's see, you guys have any, uh, speaking engagements coming up you want to mention? Any offhand? Uh, June, I'll be DFW SEM. June something. It's like, oh, what month are we in? May, June. It's like the 12th. I think it's the Wednesday. And I'll be doing cocktails if anybody wants to join me before on the 11th, as I drink cocktails. Are you excited about uh, Bali later this year? And no That's going to be fantastic. I think I'm going to spend a whole month actually over there. I think I'm going to use Thailand as a as a home base. And then I'm going to do, because uh, I'm speaking at Bali and also uh, Chiang Mai SEO. I think I'm just going to spend a month in, in Thailand. Is kind of my general game plan right now. Can you hey. join me? <laughs> I wish. Yeah, Bali is, is uh, if, if you haven't been to the DMSS.io uh, conference, it is one of the swankiest conferences there there is. It's so nice. It's really hard to beat the location. Yeah. Like, even if you never left the hotel, you wouldn't really be disappointed. Yeah. Now, now the flight there is brutal. But. That's a day. That's a Because you figure, depending on where you're flying from, either East Coast or West Coast, you're going to end up in Hong Kong or Singapore. And that's going to be about 15 hours. And then from either of those spots, or Seoul maybe, and from either of those spots, it's five or six hours to Bali from there. And you probably have a four-hour layover. Yeah. So yeah. start doing some math, and you realize that's a full day where you're just traveling. It's definitely one of those uh, bucket list SEO shows for me every time. It's it's like a real-life experience. Uh, yeah. So... Uh, uh, any final thoughts, guys? Um, they haven't announced it yet, but I'll be speaking at the uh, next NFG conference in October, so that'll be good. Nice. Um, yeah, NFG people, you need to announce so we can promote it. Yeah. And, uh, same same thing about SEO Rockstars. Come up with dates. So. Oh, yeah. The, the rumor yeah. that I heard on Rockstars oh. is October. <gasps> Ooh, October's going to be a busy month then. Yeah. Because NFG, uh, NFG's thinking October too, aren't they? Yeah. Have well, they said right they, tentatively. We'll see how that goes. Tentatively. Tentatively, then. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, I guess uh, oh, one last question here. Any opinions on rank and uh, rent, and what are some golden nuggets? So uh, I, that's, I like a whole, that's like a whole show, right? Yeah. Well, for starters, on, on rank and, and rent, well, I guess there, there are two things. You could try for a single keyword and then try to rank it, but I would imagine that the money is trying to dominate a niche, at which point you should go back to the Clint Butler and uh, Derek Iwasiak episode and look at dominating a niche. Yeah. Because uh, what, what you would stand the best chance of renting is a whole collection of niche-related pages. 
because one page probably isn't worth a while. Yeah. Yeah. But if you could say, look, I have these 700 industry keywords and their combined traffic is X, then, then you got a resource that you could probably entice people to put down some serious money for. And, you know, that's a sexy way to monetize your websites and your work. Um, you know, I personally, I don't do it. O -O -T, over the top SEO does it. Uh, and I know a lot of people who are doing it with maps. Uh, I just met a guy today who's building 3,000 map listings a day. Uh, so, you know, if that's something you want to take on. Uh, call tracking numbers are there. Finding the clients that actually take the phone numbers. Uh, you know, it sounds like a sexy thing, but it's something that you significantly have to be prepared for uh, and be financially stable enough to actually go on and do it. I wouldldn't do that as a hey, I'm just starting SEO let me do rank and rent because it sounds cool. It's not gonna work out as the way you think it is. At the conference that um, SEO spring training that uh, Clint and I were at, which was a lot of fun. that was a very well done conference. Um, hats off to Terry and Elizabeth for doing that as their first conference. Um, but Alex C. Barr spoke, and I had not seen him speak, and he's, he's online a ton if you're on the Facebook groups. And he had some interesting perspectives on rank and rent. I don't want to put words into his mouth or his training, but I think one of his bigger things was get the client first that wants to buy the links yeah. and then start your strategy. Because I think one of the problems with rank and rent is you build a site, it's ranking really well, you're getting seven leads a day and nobody to buy them. Yeah. And so he goes, I think, from a monetization strategy of kind of line up the monetization first and then start to build out. Yeah, but keep in mind also, Alex has a, an established rank and rent business, so he can afford to be to true. do that. So yeah, true. And he's got systems in place where he knows he's going to be able to do it. So <laughs> for sure, quickly. Yeah, and I know that uh, summer is often a uh, lull point for SEO, so I will uh, try to talk Kyle into uh, turning it into a more exciting time by doing uh, Cora and Pop uh, webinars. They won't be oh. episodes on the show, but we will announce that there is a webinar you can go into. Mm -hmm. And so we will set up a program for that, help keep the summer months exciting. So keep an eye <laughs> okay. out by looking at SEO data. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Loads and, and loads of data. Yeah. Very yeah. And, uh, <laughs> There's lots of new stuff coming out. So if you have ideas for uh, show topics, let us know. I think in the next week or two, we'll try to have uh, an exciting guest on who is a guru about starting up and running SEO agencies. So hopefully that comes together. Uh, uh, we need to show you guys what the uh, top uh, SEO factors are. We haven't done that in a while. We said we'd do that monthly. and. Now it's looking like every other month, and so we've got to catch up on that. Uh, so uh, let us know uh, if you have ideas for episodes. We're always interested. Leave it in the comments. And remember, please do subscribe. We depend on those subscriptions to enable features uh, in YouTube, so please do. And don't forget to check out SEO this week. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Thanks so much. Bye.